Welcome to this video, round 8 of the Open International Bavarian Championships and um, we are approaching the final rounds. Only two rounds left, round 8 and round 9. Yeah, in this game I'm playing black and I'm playing um, a German international master, Gerlef Mainz. He's um, a veteran Bundesliga player in Germany. And he's uh, rated exactly uh, the same as I am. It's quite funny. You, you really don't uh, get this very often in an, in an open tournament that you play someone with exactly your rating. But it happened here because for the drawing of, um, of, of pairings, they, they use German rating where I'm a bit higher. But um, this is a very, very open, open game in terms of uh, playing strength of the players. And we both were on... Um, let me think about it, five and a half out of seven. So it was clear for both of us that one, one and a half points are needed for a prize. So I've got black. So my attitude to this game was play, play a game. Let's see what happens. Losing is bad. Winning is excellent. <laughs> a draw is uh, okay. Yeah. And I had a look at his opening repertoire as a very solid player, but not, uh, not passive. You know, it's just a, a very, um, a very sound repertoire with d4 and he in fact played d4 i actually expected to get uh, one of my book openings like the boko or nimzo but it didn't happen he went knight f3 e6 and here he invested um, a couple of minutes <laughs> and uh, then played bishop f4 wow the london system not the kind of opening that you see uh, very often on a on a higher level but um, okay sometimes uh, sometimes people come up with that and what he definitely managed was to um, to surprise me in a way because I had never expected um, such a relatively quiet opening to be played he normally really plays main lines so I was really uh, only thinking about c4 in my preparation. Um, my prep wasn't um, super extensive. I was just relying on my general knowledge uh, of those those kind of openings that I'm preparing for my book. Um, yeah, but bishop f4. Afterwards, he just said that he was a little bit tired of his normal lines and wanted to do something else. Um, and. It is really sometimes the case, even those boring lines, if both players uh, want to fight, we, you get a fight, Yeah, even out of these quiet lines. Okay, c5 played, e3, and here, yeah, I, I, I basically, I, I normally play b6 here, and uh, let's say after something, something like that, I set up a hedgehog type of position. Um, a good line definitely but um, some some uh, weeks ago a friend of mine mentioned that there is an interesting setup with knight c6 starting with knight c6 and d5 and i wanted to try this out takes and uh, not takes a uh, 92 bishop d6 yeah uh, this is the setup it looks very uh, very simple, but it leads normally leads to a quite interesting play. Um, White's normal reply here is bishop to g3, and after castles, bishop d3, black plays b6. Um, and what White normally does is he plays something like this knight e5, bishop b7, f4, after which black plays knight e7, intending to play knight f5. This is um, quite uh, quite a dynamic position. It's not uh, not boring at all. There are all pieces on the board, and Black has those ideas. Yeah, using the knights f5 and e4, while White has a good grip on the center and and good pieces. So this is a tense position, and this is what I was aiming for um, when I um, sat there at the board. Yeah. However, he played differently, and um, it's not like this is any prep. He was just playing chess over the board. He took on d6. If we go back here, here he captured on d6. Not very exciting, but um, we get an interesting position. I can promise you. <laughs> Queen takes and bishop to b5. Yeah, bishop to b5 is simply played to prevent e5. If he plays something like that, I can play e5. 
and uh, after that it's over with any sort of interesting play. Yeah, black is even um, somewhat uh, easier to handle. So this move was expected, bishop b5. Bishop to d7, castles, castles. Yeah, and now he played a4. Yeah, a4 is interesting. What this move does is it addresses the idea to play knight d4. The, the point is I'm threatening knight takes d4. If he plays, um, yeah, let's say a nothing move like this, I can I can take here using this type of tactic. Um, a4 is um, addressing this idea. Yeah, and now, now black um, has um, a number of options. I can also just play the move a6. a6 huh? I, I didn't like it that much, this kind of simplification, because I thought that maybe um, he gets um, something with knight here and knight to c5 and a5, this kind of thing. It's not very dangerous, but um, I spotted something else, another idea, and I went for this because I thought that it leads to interesting play. I went knight e7. Um, of course, interesting play only happens with uh, what he did. He can just take d7, which just trades down and uh, is boring. But of course, he does not want to do that. He played bishop b3. Don't, don't think with this bishop f4 move he played for a draw. He just wanted to have a different uh, kind of position that, that, he usually, uh, that he usually plays. Um, yeah, my idea was with knight e7 to play this move, and I did this, bishop c6. The intention is to go knight e4 if possible, or continue with knight d7 and then go e5. Interesting. It was clear that he wants to go here, knight d7 and f4. I understand that this is probably worse for black in comparison to, to this a6 move earlier, like here just go a6 is probably the better move. But I thought that is this, this continuation is interesting and I didn't mind uh, to have a fight here. Um, okay, f4, f6 was played and he went queen h5. Originally, I wanted to go h6 here. I need to do something about h7 hanging. Yeah? Um, but um, yeah, I wasn't sure if this is so great. So I went f5. It's not a huge difference. I cannot do without the move um, anyway in the long run. And it is a structure that I had um, envisioned um, before and anyway. Yeah, knight f3, knight f6, queen h3. And now I went b6 to make sure that I can also recapture on c5 with a pawn. Yeah, how to evaluate uh, this position, this structure? Is white better? Hmm? Maybe a little bit. Um, at first you think that this is really something serious for white because he has the better bishop. That's true, but don't forget that in terms of space, black is not doing well. We have c5 against c3 as black. And um, the somewhat bad looking bishop on, uh, on um, c6 can sometimes be activated via e8 and h5. This is especially true if white continues um, aggressively with, uh, with the g4 push. And this is in fact um, what he did. He played g4. Um, this is um, leading to very interesting play. And um, I think also probably white's um, best shot at an advantage. Um, I, I played knight e4 here. Maybe this uh, isn't that great, <laughs> but the reason why is um, is very uh, is very weird. The computer is now suggesting an interesting line, and as I guess a line that didn't uh, um, really popped into our, both of our minds. Um, the engine in this case Houdini suggests now to take on c5, which looks really weird, especially because I can recapture with the pawn. But after rook a to d1, this um, idea to take on c5 has some point. Um, white is now threatening to take on e4 and then jump to g5, winning a pawn. Uh-huh, why? Hmm? Okay, let's say I may play a move like that. Then he takes and goes here, threatening checkmate. 
And if I cover that, he can take on e4. Very, very annoying. Yeah, um, it is really uh, not easy to play this as black after rook a d1. It seems that I probably should drop back to f6. And after something like that, he can play rook d2, possibly intending rook g2 at some point. The computer gives white some advantage here. And uh, yeah, maybe this is true. It looks a, li a little bit strange to take on c5, but um, I think white is a little bit easier to play here. Um, not a, a line that I think we any of us considered uh, seriously. It looks a bit strange to take uh, on c5 out of the center. He played queen g2. Yeah, queen uh, g2. A move that uh, looks fairly normal. The queen is not doing much on h3 anyway. Yeah, I took on g4. Knight takes and knight f5. Yeah, note that this is quite comparable to what I had shown earlier. You know, the line that I described when white plays 7 bishop g3. Those two knights are really nice pieces. They always um, yeah, guarantee some counterplay. Um, one point is that those two knights both um, fulfill a useful role, while white has two knights that really compete for just one square, the e5 square. Queen e2. And now I played rook to c8. Yeah, this was played to get the rook on the seventh rank, maybe using it there after a possible g5 or things like that. He went to e5 and I played now rook c7. Um, not a bad move probably, but I think an interesting option was a5. I didn't think about it that much. Um, I didn't really think that a5 from white is, um, is something that, that I should be uh, concerned about. But maybe it was an idea to simply prevent the, prevent it. After rook c7, he went a5. And um, then I recognized that I probably must play c4 now, which is not terrible, but nothing that I definitely wanted to do beforehand. Yeah, c4 and um, back to c2. Yeah, b5, yeah, I have to keep it closed. Giving him the a file is uh, is of new use. And now knight d2 was played. Very logical move. The knight on e4 is uh, is a problem. And as mentioned, white has two knights competing for e5. So to, to trade one is, is a good idea. Yeah, and well, I can retreat to f6, theoretically speaking. But what is the point, really? So I just took on d2. Queen takes and bishop e8. Yeah, I want to get this bishop into play. What I was thinking is that my king is a little bit safer here. And maybe, maybe on a good day, I get in stuff like g5 and rook g7 with an attack. Must be a very good day, but maybe I get this in. Yeah, he played queen e2 now. And with this move offered a draw. Very interesting moment in the game. Um... Yeah, he offered the draw mostly because he was a little bit low on time. Um, I had played um, as usual, as usual, um, quite quickly and had about uh, about twenty five minutes left, while he had maybe twelve or thirteen minutes left. So a little bit uncomfortable time wise, and um, yeah, I pretty much um, immediately decided to continue to play. To, um, to to maybe exploit this slight advantage uh, on the clock, plus his somewhat insecure king. But it turns out that the, the first move that I played um, with the, the move that I played um, together with declining the draw um, was <clears throat> not so precise. I played queen e7. The idea is to go to h4 and prepare bishop to h5. Not... Um, not an, un, not an it's not unlogical or illogical to do that but it seems that <clears throat> um right now after e4 which is what he played um is having a slight advantage i probably <clears throat> should have played something like this in order to have knight e7 after the move e4 and this is probably about equal as least that this is what um the the engine um assesses this position like 
Um, yeah, complicated, yeah, very complicated position and interesting to play. Um, I, I, I uh, simply underestimated the e4 move. e4. Now I have to take, yeah, knight d6 does not make any sense really. So I take, bishop takes and queen h4. I was still optimistic, yeah, because I have this move and I thought that maybe also the f4 pawn can be a weakness. Yeah, I have a rook and a queen playing against it, but um, ultimately it's not a big deal. White can easily defend the pawn and he has good pieces. Yeah? A great knight on e5, a good bishop on e4. So here I already um, need to be concerned with keeping an equal position. Queen f2, queen h6. I don't want to trade. King h1 and bishop h5. Quite logical. Rook a1. And uh, yeah, here I start to drift enormously. Um, yeah, to be honest, I did not really know what to do here. And then I decided um, to play um, a waiting move like king h8. Yeah, what I simply did is I overlooked his reply. And um, after that, king h8 is really a totally useless move. He played now the very strong move queen g2. Why is this strong? It plants queen g5. And the queen trade is excellent for white because the problem that white has is a slightly insecure king position. And after a queen trade, this is totally nullified. So it's nothing that uh, I like to see trading queens. Uh, this really uh, put me, um, yeah, or this really um, irritated me, the queen g5 idea. And after some uh, consideration, I played knight to d6. But with knight d6, I overlooked something. I should have played queen f6, it seems. This I should have played, with white being uh, somewhat better. But nothing too serious. After this, however, um, I am in trouble. And uh, in trouble due to a tactical idea, which, however, was not easy to see. And he did not see it. Um, he went queen g5, just as planned. And this keeps an advantage, no, no doubt about it. But he could have played f5, which is <clears throat> very difficult to see move for a human player. Um, the reason why is that after takes, he can actually capture here. And the reason is takes, takes, because the queen has this long diagonal and actually delivers a back rank checkmate here. If I play this uh, mistaken series of moves means that after f5 well I, I can take probably should take but uh, but here I cannot take on f5 and this is really 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 bad for black um, I I honestly have have doubts um, if I could have uh, um, kept this position together um, I think after f5, um, this is in fact, this is the relatively best defense, rook g8, not very attractive. White just has this fantastic knight on e5 plus the activity. Um, I'm not sure that it's objectively lost. I think the computer is still uh, claiming 0 0.9 or something. But in a practical kind of game, mm, I don't know. I don't think I would have been able to save this. It looks very, very bad. But he didn't find the move. We both didn't have much time left. I was catching up rapidly on the clock, noticing that um, after declining the draw, <laughs> I basically immediately uh, yeah, got, got into trouble. Yeah, well, he play didn't play this. He played queen g5. And uh, I was oblivious, of course, f5 I didn't see. Uh, queen g5 was what I expected. Yeah, and now I went rook to f6. I did not want to allow him to take on h6 and spoil my structure. So rook f6. He played bishop c2. This is maybe slightly inaccurate, but it's um, very difficult. Uh, or It's a very um, difficult thing to... Um, to look at those those moves uh, played with serious time pressure and criticize them. Bishop c6 is what the computer gives and it just seems to be a little bit uh, more active. Yeah, It looks at this pawn 
and limits the knight a little bit more than bishop c2 does. After that, white's advantage is, is quite substantial. Maybe not a win, but mm, it's very uncomfortable. Um, bishop c2 was his move. There went a6. Yeah, he now took here, rook takes, and f5. Yeah, this type of position is exactly why king h8 was such a such a bad idea. The position opens up and I definitely need my king to defend the back rank and uh, yeah, in general be a good piece that plays. So I went king g8, there is no, no big choice. This is also the best defense. Um, something like um, the capture here, for example, yeah, this can easily backfire. Yeah, here white is, is just winning immediately. Yeah, there are some some nice ways to to lose quickly. Yeah, king g8 is better. What I played is better. He took rook takes, and now he went rook f4. Rook f4 is is not very accurate. It turns out, but okay. The next couple of moves um, have some mistakes, but we both didn't have much time left. Um, King g2 is better according to the engine and this is um, due to the fact that after rook f4 I now have a relatively simple move to uh, to equalize the game um, and to be honest I'm not really sure why I didn't play it. <clears throat> Somehow it, it did not occur to me. This relatively simple move rook f6 now equalizes quite easily. The reason is that the position is much easier to defend as black uh, with just one pair of rooks than with two. My rooks are not very well coordinated and exchanging one is helpful. And now hmm, he has a hard time to avoid the rook trade. What uh, exactly should he do? If he takes, this knight does not have any great square. So in fact, he has to play something not very attractive looking like yeah, rook to f1 or something, yeah? this, this kind of move. And uh, well, this is really, really nothing, nothing for white. After a trade of rooks. Um, yeah, he has lost all of his advantage here. Yeah, I did not play that. I played knight f7. Well, mentioned as mentioned under time pressure, but uh, still rook f6 is fairly simple. And uh, I should have played that. Yeah, now he went rook e to f1, doubling on the f5. This was, of course, the intended idea of rook f4. Um, bishop e4 was interesting. Maybe a little bit more dangerous in the time trouble. Going here is the idea. After knight e5, for example, bishop d5, white wins straight away. Um, I can defend after bishop e4 probably, but it would have been very, very uncomfortable in time trouble. Um, rook c to e7 is the best defense, it seems. After bishop here, just rook d6, keeping um, the position to um, a slight disadvantage for black. Not sure if I would have found that with very little time. That's really the only kind of setup that that keeps uh, things together. And it's still not comfortable to play. Yeah, he, he went with rook to f1 as mentioned. Um, here, rook e to f1. Um, and now it seems that um, maybe rook e8 is a little bit uh, more precise. But I went with this move 39, yeah, with very little time left. Um, he played rook f5 now, and here bishop f5 was very interesting. One point is that the normal looking move rook f6 is answered by knight d7, and this is not very comfortable. Um, it seems that after bishop f5 I have to play a move like rook to h6, and after that white has the dangerous idea bishop c8. Uh, that looks very shaky. Yeah? This is attacked and there is still this huge pressure on the f farm. It seems that black can somehow keep things together, but it's not uh, not nice or anything. Something like rook back, 
bishop g4. Yeah, and then um, a move like g5, but white white is really better. Yeah, bishop f5. Bishop f5 would have been very very problematic for black. I don't think I could have hold that. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm really not <laughs> very satisfied that I overlooked the rook f6 resource earlier, which would have equalized um, rather comfortably. However, it shouldn't be. Um, yeah, we shouldn't be too critical about those moves. We really didn't have much time left. Um, rook f5 was played. Also looks quite good. And now bishop g6. This was played with two seconds on the clock and uh, it was close to a time loss because I knocked over some piece and I could just put it back and press the clock with two seconds left. Yeah, bishop g6. Okay, he took on g6, which is right. And I took with the pawn. Yeah, it does not look nice, the double pawn, but I did not want this to happen with the tempo. Uh, it, it looked very uncomfortable. Something like, let's say, rook d6 and b3. Um, I think what, what I played is uh, is better, the, the pawn capture. This move. Yeah, and I think around here, probably um, white is, uh, is spoiling his advantage. Um, it is not easy, however, not at all. He went to f2. I was more expecting uh, rook c5. Maybe this is the more the more dangerous uh, way to play. Um, white is better here because he's more active. Rook here, rook here. And the bishop is always putting pressure here. Plus long, long term, there is this issue of the pawns on light squares where maybe this bishop can enter at a later stage. My counter plays on the second rank, so I'm not without chances, but it's, it's very uncomfortable to play. He had another idea. He went back to f2. Instead, instead of rook c5, he went back to f2. His idea was to double, to double here. Yeah, I played knight d6. I need to activate the knight. I cannot I keep it passive. And, uh, and now I think oh, the engine thinks it's very difficult for a human to be so precise here. Yeah, that king g1 is good. Getting the king into into the um, into the game in a way. Um, he played something very logical looking, rook g2, act attacking my my pawn. But it seems that this um, gives up hopes uh, for an advantage. Uh, now I could have played knight f5, which would have been somewhat easier than what I did. But what I played, um, I think, was okay as well. Knight f5, um, after takes, takes, rook takes, should lead to a draw. Because I'm so active here, it's, uh, it's basically impossible for him to, uh, to win this. I have a similar idea in the game, just in a more complicated fashion. And um, it, if you uh, can keep it simple, you should keep it simple normally. Um, I can show you what I played. It's just it's just more complicated. I played rook f7, rook g1, and knight f5. And here I'm going for counterplay in a different manner. Rook takes, 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 knight h4. And this is the counterplay. Rook f1 is a mate if he's not <laughs> not uh, paying attention. Uh, of course, not happening in a tournament game. But of course, the knight, it's taking away an important square. So this is uh, counterplay. He went uh, with rook g4, which is, uh, which is right. Give, gave the check. Rook f2. Bishop e4. Yeah, and here um, I played rook e2, which is again making it a little bit more complicated than necessary. It seems that king f7 is a little bit better, but rook e2 is probably enough. The whole point is my rook is on the second rank and is very, very active. What I want to do is I want to um, 
I have this counterplay against b2 and I have this knight f3 rook h2 mating idea, the Arabian mate, <laughs> my favorite mate. I get it on the board really often. Um, yeah, let's, let's have a look how this counterplay can unfold. He now played this check on d5. Alternatively, he could have played bishop b7, after which I can take rook, t rook f1. That's important, yeah? After this, I'm even uh, better, yeah? Or winning even, mating white or winning material. But he has rook f1. And after that, this is the counterplay, g5, bishop takes g4, intending again knight f3 and rook h2 mate, bishop b7, rook a2, a6, knight f3, very long line, but it's very typical, black is activating all his forces for counterplay, and this at the end will lead to a drawn rook endgame. Yeah, this in fact uh, would lose due to rook b3. So we will trade those two pawns and after that basically everybody will draw. So I have enough counterplay with, uh, with the activity. In the game, he didn't play bishop b7 as mentioned after rook e2. He uh, gave this check king h7 and then rook g4. White can try to win the game, but um, it is a very risky business and um, a decision that an experienced player is um, very reluctant to make. He can try rook b1, covering passively. However, I have some substantial counterplay. g5, for example, h3, king h6, rook g1, g4, takes king g5. And I'm threatening really to use my king in the attack. White is totally passive, and this is something that a good player really does not want to have. You can easily, easily get to a position where you somehow lose the b-pawn, and then my two against one here can be dangerous. So I'm not saying that I have winning chance, but this is the kind of yeah, playing for a win when you accept that you might lose with some inaccurate play. And um, he didn't have much time left, so he decided at the end, after king h7, to play rook g4, after which I also don't have anything else than this, this pendulum. And here we agreed, um, agreed to draw the game. Also note that <clears throat> with the draw we both um, still were in uh, contention for um, a money prize in the, in the final round. Yeah, a good fighting game where I guess I was uh, lucky yeah, in the time trouble uh, phase there were some inaccurate moves by both sides but it was always um, black being in, in danger and um, I think with a little bit more time on the clock or a little bit um, yeah on, on a good day you probably would have won the game I don't know it looked uh, very very critical for black and um, it was maybe a little bit um, yeah, declining the draw, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I should have just accepted, but <clears throat> I like the position. I had more time on the clock, so it uh, it turned out to be a risky decision, but um, you cannot um, play draws all the time and expect to win a prize. You have to risk something. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this game. It was an interesting fight, even out of this uh, somewhat uh, conservative opening. Thanks for watching.